This studio apartment means the world to Terrence Jackson. This is a blessing for anybody to have our own place, place to cook. You're not in the cold, you're not in the rain. He lost his contract job in Lake Oswego and quickly ran out of options. Well, I lost my truck, so I couldn't sleep in that anymore, so the shelter wasn't there. And from there, it was like, getting little jobs here, little jobs there, and it just wasn't enough. It wasn't steady pay. Jackson now lives at Hartwood Commons, a hotel turned housing facility in Aloha that opened in April, 2023. It's Washington County's first building of its kind, 54 units with on-site assistance, an option for people who need a more stable place to live. <laughs> I'm happy as heck. I'm happy as heck. Hartwood Commons is working great for Terrence, but many people thought it would serve a different purpose. KGW found that government agencies sold Hartwood Commons as a building that would help people with housing and higher needs like severe mental illness and substance use, but it's not really being used in that way. A year on, it is working for some and not for others, showing that gray area between intent and what's really needed for people with the highest needs. Hartwood Commons is a taxpayer-funded project, a product of big new taxes to fight homelessness. Washington County bought and redeveloped the Aloha Quality Inn for $10 million. Most of that came from the Metro Housing Bond, which voters approved in 2018. The county is also paying about $1.5 million each year for support services and housing subsidies. That money comes from the Supportive Housing Services Tax that voters approved in 2020, a 1% tax on high-earning individuals and businesses. Seeing the plans for Hartwood Commons, Sally Reed couldn't wait. She promoted it to just about anyone she talked to. This project had it all. And on paper, it looked beautiful. It looked exactly like what people needed. Um, and I prayed four years that my son would get in there. Reed's son, Philip has experienced cycles of homelessness for years, in and out of hospitals with mental health challenges. So Sally Reed closely watched the county's presentations explaining the Hartwood Commons project. Behavioral health support and case managers on site to help support high needs, vulnerable populations maintain long term successful tenancies. Thrilled that the county was building something that would provide all the support her son needs. These types of participants, these are generally people who have um, higher levels of being um, hospitalized, um, who have maybe been within the jail and prison systems. Um, so this can be really helpful for that particular group. Hartwood Commons is described as a permanent supportive housing building. But what does that mean? I typically say that there are as many definitions of that term as there are people in the room. Marsha Hilly is the executive director of Sequoia Mental Health Services. Sequoia case managers help the residents at Hartwood Commons. And it was a new venture. You know, we had not done this before. So what were the expectations for Hartwood Commons? Metro's explanation of the project says it serves the highest acuity and chronicity individuals in the community. People with serious and persistent mental illness, people with substance use, people who are unlikely to be successful in a traditional housing setting. Then there's Jess Larson with the county's Department of Housing Services. The idea is that we want to make sure that um, through permanent supportive housing, no one ever returns to homelessness. Larson says Hartwood Commons was always designed for independent living with support services on site, but optional. And so if they're not choosing to engage in the behavioral health services on site or the case management supports on site, that's totally their choice. Um, but they might not be getting the care they need inside their apartment and there's no um, effective way to intervene. Sally Reed was surprised when she read the lease that her son signed. It felt standard, not like a lease tailored to people like her son. It required 24 hours notice for anyone to enter and check on Philip in his room, and a threatening action could lead to eviction. Based on her son's mental health needs, she knew that could be a problem. It was a battle of behavioral health versus housing, and behavioral health lost, which means the people who really needed this are no longer here. Philip was evicted from Hartwood Commons this spring. Sally says he slept on the floor for the six months he lived there, in a dirty room. He's been homeless for the last two months, in need of a higher level of services, but with nowhere to go. There was no um, stopgap measure put in to take care of these people if they were evicted. 
So they basically just went back to a shelter and back on a waiting list, which is extremely sad and upsetting. Hilly says the county, providers, and community all likely had different expectations for what Hartwood Commons would be. So I think we've learned a lot and going forward of who we can best serve and who really needs a higher level of care that this independent living setting was just not designed to offer. And to serve a higher level of acuity, you would really need to staff it with more um, clinical positions. Washington County reports 12 exits from Hartwood Commons in its first year. Some people transferred out, others went to jail, and three died. Hilly says if there's a lesson from year one, it's that Oregon desperately needs housing and treatment facilities, places that can take care of people with mental illness and substance use disorders. The focus needs to be on developing more of the settings that are appropriate for their needs. And we've come a long way, but we've got a long way to go. Sally Reed thought that's exactly what Hartwood Commons was built for, but she was wrong. I think for now, going forward, it's perfect for what the county is now using it for. But it's sad we don't have an alternative now. As it stands, the 54 rooms at Hartwood Commons are nearly all full, with people transitioning from homelessness to independent housing. People like Terrence Jackson, who plan to eventually move out to their own place. It's better than being in a shelter. And it's given me an opportunity. And I'm actually happy, a lot happier than being in a shelter. It's one step closer to where my goals are.